So who the f*** am I and why do I always keep talking about sunscreen? You guys had some questions about skincare, about my personal life, and my dating. Does being an influencer drive me crazy? You also, you also had some questions about makeup and skincare thrown in there, and we're gonna get through those questions, but... To keep it interesting, I'm giving myself 90 seconds to answer each question, so keep watching. So the first question comes from Coco Rose, who wants to know, am I dating? She wants to know what the dating scene is like for women over 35 in New York City. She says she lives in Philly, which is only about an hour away by Amtrak, and if it makes sense for her to kind of open up her dating app. So I'm gonna put 90 seconds on the clock. Well, actually, I'm gonna put a minute and 30 seconds on the clock because the, you know, the iPhone thing don't, don't got the 90 seconds. Oh, here we go. Girl, dating in New York City is ghetto. Zero out of 10 would recommend. I'm currently on a dating hiatus. The last time I kind of dated someone was 2019. Really nice guy. Things didn't work out. He did try to contact me in 2020 amongst the Panarini <laughs> chaos. I, I never replied and he probably emailed because I blocked him on Instagram. You know, I didn't block him from my phone, but he probably assumed I did because he probably went on my Instagram. But I blocked him from Instagram so he couldn't keep up, keep tabs up on me, you know? Because th that's a whole long story for another day. But I work in a very female dominated industry and it's kind of hard to, you know, be in co-ed situations. There are situations where there are guys there, but that, that don't mean they into me. <laughs> so I was doing the dating apps but guys on dating apps need therapy. I don't know what it is about the, the, the guys, but they, they, they gonna need that real deep, like going into your childhood type therapy, right? So I decided, okay, no apps. I'm just going to meet guys the old fashioned way. And you know, I, I'm also a firm believer in things happen for a reason. So if the universe wants me to find Mr. Mr. 55 and up salt and pepper with some grown kids, they got kids so I can get grandkids before I actually push out kids of my own, that would be really perfect. But for you, I definitely say that opening up your dating horizons is always a good idea. So next question comes from Venus November, and she wants to know, what is a day in the life for Danielle being a YouTube blogger? Also, do I watch makeup channels or have a makeup routine? And boop. So I have had a skincare routine probably since I was like 10, but you know, back then, you know, the options weren't as robust as they are now. So it was like Neutrogena, probably some Clearasil or some Seabreeze or something. Actually, I probably didn't use Seabreeze because I remember the, like the sting and I probably wasn't about that life even back then either. But for me, I've always talked about skincare since I started my blog back in 2007. Being in the beauty industry, I was able to go to a lot of events where there were dermatologists, estheticians, uh, cosmetic chemists, brand owners, all, all sorts of people in the industry that I learned a lot of stuff from. So I was able to kind of take more deep dives that way. A day in the life, it, it's hard on a day to day. Since the pandemic, I've been working a little bit too much and I need to figure my work-life balance out again. <laughs> because before I used to be like, oh, it's six o'clock, I'm off the clock, that's it. And I would definitely wouldn't work on the weekends. Whereas now I'm on the couch working until 10, 11, 12 at night. And right now, as I'm filming, it's a Saturday. Hello, it's me from the future. I wanted to add in here that I have two amazing young ladies that help me on my team. I have Maya, who is my assistant, who helps me with strategy and some marketing stuff. And my amazing video editor, Coriel, who makes my videos look fabulous. As far as YouTube channels, I don't really watch many makeup channels, but it's a mixed bag for me when it comes to the channels that I watch. I watch like Walking Dead, commentary channels, I watch fashion channels, I watch a lot of those like real life lore and like sci-fi kind of channels because like, like that kind of geeky stuff intrigues me. Lately I've been watching, I'm gonna I'm I'm let it, I'm gonna let this one extend a little bit. Lately I've been watching a lot of the like plastic surgeon and plastic and people who get plastic surgery videos because I'm intrigued about that as well. And there is a little bit of like the, the genre of like Gen Z commentary channels that I kind of like to watch because they've got an interesting perspective. But next question. Okay, so next question. Hi, Danielle. Hello. I'm a new subscriber. Thank you so much for subscribing. I enjoy you guys so much. Um, love the content that you create. 
Why are you so passionate about skincare? What is it about skincare that you just find the passion? That's not what they said. I actually kind of just kind of like ad libbed because you know I kind of got to look down to see what they actually said. As a fellow fashion and beauty fanatic, I always love to hear others' stories. So little timer on here, boop. So this is a little bit of a cheat with the clock because I kind of answered part of this in the previous question. But skincare is intriguing to me because it's just something that you're constantly learning something new. Like I feel like with makeup, you get to a point where it's like, all right, we, we, we did the contouring, we did the bronzing, we did this, we did that, we put lashes on, we did reverse contouring, we did, you know, like the, after a while it's like, okay, we know. <laughs> but with skincare, I feel like there's just so much out there, so many different little genres within skincare that are intriguing. But especially for me, I like it because the audience that I attract are people of color who we don't always get the same kind of skincare information that, you know, the others get because, you know, the world is just, you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but I like being able to educate people and I also like being able to learn from others as well. So that is why I'm so passionate about skincare. I had another little 20 seconds. Next question comes from Chocolate and Beautiful, and yes you are, honey. She wants to know, what are some of your favorite things to do in New York City? Have you considered any major plastic surgery? If you don't mind sharing. Uh, what are your favorite go-to perfumes? Any holiday traditions? What's your next vacation? So love these questions. Thank you so much for asking them. Got my little 90 seconds on the clock. Boom, boom, boom. So I would like to go out to eat. Which is funny because I'm also a little bit frugal. Like I'm, I'm frugal in the sense that I don't like to go out to eat like every week or make that like a big expense. But when I do go out to eat, I like to like extravagance. Like I want to try everything and this and that and the third and have a good time. The pandemic has made it a lot more interesting to dine out because you know one much else to do <laughs> and plus they've got all these really cool outdoor dining situations that kind of made it feel like you know i traveled elsewhere even though you know i just got in my car and drove 20 minutes into manhattan yes i am actually considering plastic surgery i am considering a brush reduction and a lift listen i have had the titties for 40 years <laughs> and it's time for them to just go down a little bit. Now, the thing is, I've always had bigger boobs, right? But they were bigger boobs that were like perky and, and buoyant. However, <laughs> with age, they, they ain't so perky right now. You know, they, they little, you know, do they wobble to and fro, you know, just a, li just a little bit. So I am considering a reduction and a lift. Um, go to perfumes right now. Tom Ford Bitter Peach. My friend Melissa bought this for me. I like, I'm obsessed with it. Like obsessed. I'm about to go over a little bit here, but that, you know, it's a game that I created myself, so why not? Yes, yeah, so on, on the holiday traditions, I usually go and visit my family in Georgia. My family's not originally from Georgia. My family's originally from Trinidad, and even originally from that, from the, you know, the motherland. I usually go down there, spend some time with my family. My mom will make roti and curry and, and punch a cream and sorrel and all like Trinidadian things, and the sweet bread and the, mm, everything, and you know, I'm just, come back home and need that extended <laughs> seatbelt on the plane. This year we're going to Savannah. We did that, I wanna say maybe three or four years ago. We're gonna drive down, I'll fly down with Cat Williams. It's gonna be my first time flying with the cat <laughs> on the plane. Well, where else would I be flying? But I'm gonna fly down there, hang out for a couple days, then we're gonna drive down to Savannah. We're gonna stay in an Airbnb and just be eating our way and having a good time. Next vacation, I'm not sure. I'm kind of planning something with two other influencers, but you know, we'll see. Because I even forgot where we said we were gonna go. <laughs> but I'm the type of person where it's like, you're like, hey, you wanna go travel somewhere? I'm like, yes, yes, I do. Anyway, next question. Okay, so Tangie Edwards asks, what about mental health? With a busy schedule like yours, how do you maintain and keep your mental health in check? Do you meditate? What do you do? Now, this is just my interpretation of the, the, the question that was asked. I figured I'd jazz up the video a little bit because, you know, these little Q and A's, you know, if you don't deliver them in a nice way, then, you know, people be like, oh, this is boring, let me click off. But anyway, in the 90 seconds on the clock, 
I'm glad that you should ask that. I was seeing a therapist. I actually, the funny thing is, you know how like, you know, YouTube ads, they'll have those uh, influencers talking about better help. So I was watching Kelly Stamps channel and she had an ad for better help. And I was like, oh, cause I'm a firm believer in things always happen for a reason. And at the time I was thinking some things and I was like, oh wow, let me go check this out. It had this little discount code and everything and all of that. Paired me up with a really nice black woman therapist. I have, I gotta say, like I've, how long was I in therapy? Um, four months, five months, maybe a little bit more than that. And the first two, three sessions, I was like, wow, this is a freaking amazing. Now I had been in therapy before that, but it was more like the in-person kind of stuff. And I felt like I didn't connect with the person culturally, but this time around, I feel like, like, yeah, like, D d this is it. I don't meditate. I feel like my attention span is a little too all over the place to meditate. I, I need to. There's a lot of things that I should be doing that I don't do because my attention span is bad. And that, that's another thing that we, you know, kind of talk about in therapy. Do I journal? I used to journal. I don't journal anymore again. I have no time, but I'm slowly trying to work some things out. I recently just got a schedule that I put together with my assistant, Maya. And like, I'll put it up here. It's like color coded and everything. And it looked crazy at first, but it actually helps me to keep on top of things. So I know what I need to do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a little crowded now because I was doing this experiment in October where I, I was like, all right, if I post more on Instagram, maybe I'll grow more. I, the, the jury's still out on that. And once November 1st comes, I'm going back to posting just a few times a week like I usually did. But um, I'm trying to get my, my schedule to be to be straight. Thank you for your question. Next question comes from Tina Cho. What's up, Tina? She wants to know, what do you find the most enjoyable and the least enjoyable about being an influencer? I might need a little bit more than the 90 seconds, but here we go. Okay, so one thing that I love is you guys. Being able to cultivate a community of like-minded people is amazing. It takes a while to do this. Like you don't just start a, a YouTube channel, you just don't start an Instagram or what have you, and all of a sudden like you find your tribe. It takes a lot of trial and error. And if you don't know what you're doing, it can take forever. But luckily there's a lot of videos on YouTube where they can teach you how to, you know, find your niche and you know, tricks and, and all that other stuff for YouTube, right? So I love the community that I have cultivated here. I feel like you guys are a good part of like skincare nerds and wanting to know the information much like myself. But I feel like a lot of y'all get like my like crazy sense of humor as well too. So it's like, you know, I like, I like that kind of like balance with y'all. Now, the least enjoyable thing, <sighs> The mean comments don't get to me as much as they used to because I have s quickly figured out why people leave mean comments. So <laughs> now I'm just either like laughing or just like shaking my head when I see them. And again, with cultivating your own community, I block and remove things that like if people are just being absolutely ridiculous, it's like, you ain't gotta be here. <laughs> like it's one thing to be like, oh, well I tried this product and it didn't work for me and this and then the third, that's fine. Or, oh, I disagree with that point you made, that's fine too but but being like oh you are so ugly why did that kind of shit <laughs> bye bye baby bye bye another thing that i find the, the least enjoyable is like i put in a lot of work for to to make my content right whether that is a video a graphic that i put on instagram a photo that i take on the gram or a reel or a tiktok or what have you right I hate when I have done all that work and people just bypass all of the information and want to ask me directly about the information that is in that piece of content. That drives me so bananas. <laughs> it just makes me want to be like, Arr! now I just ignore it. <laughs> When people ask me stuff like if the answer's in the caption or if the answer's in the video, I kind of just ignore it because it's like, how dare you? <laughs> sometimes some of the comments and the, the DMs and, and emails I get sometimes, it makes me question humanity because I'm like, how are you functioning as adults? This is why we are where we at as a society because some of y'all 
Well, not y'all, because I feel like y'all watching this wouldn't, you know, y- y'all not like that. But you know, some of them. <clears throat> All right, next question. If you had to pick only one mineral sunscreen to wear for the rest of your life, which one would you pick? Also, what are your five and 10 year goals? I love a, a multifaceted question like that. Thank you for asking that question. And boop. So I actually don't wear mineral sunscreens. The only time I wear a mineral sunscreen is if I've just had a pro treatment and the person suggests that I wear a mineral sunscreen. Otherwise, I just throw on any chemical sunscreen that works for my oily skin. But if I had to pick a mineral sunscreen and questions like this, I'd I'd be like, I don't wanna answer that because I'm not implying that the person who asked this is this way, but sometimes people ask me something because they want me to give them a direct answer because they don't wanna do the research themselves for their own skin. And then like, if I tell them a product and it don't work for them, it's like, but you told me. So, okay. But if I had to pick one mineral sunscreen, theoretically speaking, it would be the Olay mineral sunscreen. A lot of these mineral sunscreens don't really jive with my lifestyle and my oily skin. The ones that are easier, that that don't have as much of a cast tend to be a little bit more oily. And that's not what I love for my oily skin. The Olay mineral one, while it wasn't the perfect like finish for me, better than a lot of the other mineral sunscreens out there. And it actually could be something that I could wear in in the summertime. And the cast on it was like five and 10 year goals, Make money, get money, 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 money. No, seriously, I have some goals of making some money, honey, because I'm trying to retire. I don't know if you guys, if you watched any of my vlogs where I talk about I love watching this channel, uh, Our Rich Journey. I love those people. They retired early at 39 and 40. I, I just turned 40, so, you know, that that's not the goal. But I, I want a life of happiness and leisure. So unfortunately I gotta, you know, work mad hard right now to, to get that. But that's why how I foresee in the next five to, to, to 10 years. Actually, let me expand on that a little bit. Specifically, I, I probably wanna kinda buy a farm <laughs> and sell skincare products. Uh, <laughs> the farm thing is something I've thought about for a while because I just want like a big plot of land. Not like a full on farm, like, I don't know, maybe I'll have a couple chickens and like grow my own like herbs and stuff like that. Maybe a cow or a goat, I don't know. Cat Williams would be there, you know, my cat. I would have a dog. I, I've always wanted a dog, but I don't want to have a dog and live in an apartment because I'm like not trying to like leave the house to walk the dog and I don't want to do the wee wee pad thing. We'll see what happens in the next five to 10 years. Next question comes from Renuka75. Hello, who said, you mentioned a while ago on a vlog that you were, you had a goal for investing and in retirement. I'm curious on how you started investing and how you stay on track. Thank you for your question. So I actually used to sell investments and insurance back in the day before I started all of this stuff here. So I had a better understanding of how the market worked and what the different investment vehicles were. But that's not to say that you have to like work in those industries to get an understanding. A lot of banks and financial institutions have like these free uh, informational platforms where you can learn about investing and you don't even have to have an account with them. I know for sure SunTrust, which is called Truist, I believe now, Bank of America has one. A lot of the major banks have one or, you know, check your local bank and see if they have one or just kind of like Google around for like, you know, free financial platforms. Make sure it comes from a reputable source though, because there's a lot of people out there that selling your credit repair and all this other stuff and just taking your money on a swindle. Like, don't do not do that. I stay on track now because my goal now is a lot different than like when I was in my 20s. In my 20s, I think my goal was, girl, just buy the most balling ass shit <laughs> and you'll pay for it later. And boy, did I pay for it later. Now, I do like to have things. I don't need to have a lot of things. Uh, so I put a good chunk of my money in savings. I do, you know, have some things that I spend a little bit on for fun vacations and such but now i just kind of like have some money that automatically goes whatever i earn on youtube i just put that directly into my vanguard retirement account i also started a robin hood account sometime during quarantine because i was bored and i normally don't buy individual stocks but 
I was in quarantine and I was bored. <laughs> so I bought a lot of stocks from companies that were down in industries where I was like, oh, once everything gets back to normal, you know, things will pick up. And here's why I don't buy individual stocks, because I have not looked at that Robinhood account in like a minute, like probably a couple months. <laughs> There's like fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 in it. But this is money that I don't really like count on right this is like just kind of like play money almost like almost like gambling and so, so to speak most of my money is in index funds mutual funds i have a you know retirement account that's in a, a mutual fund and i bought life insurance back when i was like 26 or so so that's what i do so far next question comes from your bff tiff hey tiff she wants to know what is my spirit animal i'm not even gonna turn the timer on for that one because this is a real easy quick question that i can answer most certainly a cat like cat williams lives the best life ever like dude sleeps a lot he plays he lays around in lounges and looks cute and you know we're at his beck and call like anyone who comes around cat williams knows that this is cat williams world we we just living in it okay so Cat for sure. So Valeria wants to know more tips on buying less makeup. So, hey girl, and thank you so much for your question. Put a little grip on the thing there. Now, this took me a while to, to get with. I think if you go back on this channel that you will see a video where I purge about 40 pounds of makeup from my stash. Purging is one of the first things that you need to do if you're looking to spend less money on either makeup or clothes, because when you have too many things, it is hard for your brain and sometimes even just your bare naked eyes to be able to kind of like compute what you have. So the less things you have, the more you're, you're likely to use them. So I just went on a huge rampage and purged a whole bunch of makeup. Once I did that, I was able to see what I had more easily, more easily, better. I was able to see what I had better. And that led to less spending because I'm like, oh, I already know I have a brown eyeshadow. How do I know? Because I saw that mess this morning. So having less things leads to you buying less makeup. So you're probably gonna need to do a purge. And now I only buy things that wow and razzle dazzle me. I still get some makeup in PR, and some of that stuff, if it doesn't, is if it doesn't suit me, I don't keep it in the stash because I don't need my stash overflowing. I give it away to family, friends, you know, that sort of thing, or I donate if it's something brand new. Ah, we actually got that one in with, with more time on the timer. So next up, Chantel Edwards asks, what are some of your favorite makeup products? Can you also tell us how you switch up your skincare routine from summer to fall? So, boop. Okay, so I have a relatively small makeup stash. It might still be bigger compared to like the average person who's not an influencer, but compared to a lot of the makeup influencers, the stashes I've seen, my, mine is pretty small. I actually went over uh, a couple of the things that I enjoy in my stash. I did that on IGTV, so make sure you check that out over on my Instagram. You don't have to have Instagram to look at it. And then I also link the products on my Shop My IG page, so I'll leave a link to that in the description box so you can see everything. But if you want, you know, to get a description of what things are, why I like them and whatnot, you know, check out that IGTV. Switch up my routine from summer to fall. Usually what I need to switch up from summer to fall first and foremost is usually my moisturizer. During the summer, my sunscreen was moisturizing enough, so I didn't need to necessarily wear a moisturizer on underneath. This time of year, I definitely do need to put a moisturizer on, depending on the day. Like a day like today, it felt like summer again, so I reverted back to what I would do in the summer. Sometimes with my skincare routine, I gotta take it day by day. The weather can be so finicky that I have to kind of like check the weather every day to figure out what moisturizer combo I'm gonna be putting on my skin. But other things like my treatment products, my cleanser, my exfoliant, those are usually things that remain the same. The treatment product may change depending on if my skin changes regardless of the season, but from season to season, from season to season, it's usually the moisturizer that definitely needs to change. Okay, so next question comes from Jade. Hi, Jade. I have dark patches at the sides of my nose because of my tight glasses. Please, can you recommend products I can use to lighten it? I'm combo skin and a black teen. I just love when the babies come on the channel. Like, it just, I know you probably like, Miss Ma'am, I ain't no baby, but you little baby, little Jade, you. All right, let me answer you a question though. And boop. So the thing with our skin, 
any kind of like irritation, scratch, bite, burn, sun exposure, acne. These are all things that can lead to the skin producing more melanin. Friction is another one, which is what's happening with your glasses. See if you go to your optician next time, if they can do something to kind of loosen it up a little bit so that it's not so tight on your nose. A lot of these eyeglasses are made for the, the European nose and you know how that goes. So it might be a little bit too tight on your bridge. So see if you can get the glasses adjusted because if it's too tight and it keeps rubbing up against your nose, even if you do stuff in your routine to lighten it, it's going to come back because you got to keep wearing your glasses, right? So that's one. Two, make sure you check out the hyperpigmentation series. There are two playlists. One playlist is with subscribers who come on and talk about how they got rid of their hyperpigmentation. The other is some of the like the actives and stuff like that. Dr. Alexa Stevens and some other pros have come on the channel to talk about you know, what you need to do to get rid of your hyperpigmentation in that playlist. So definitely check that out. Definitely make sure you are wearing sunscreen. There's the videos galore on sunscreen here. But the main thing, of course, is to check with your optician to see if there's something that they can do to kind of loosen up your glasses so that that friction isn't going to further cause more hyperpigmentation because then the problem is just going to keep happening and keep happening and keep happening. So thank you guys so much for submitting your questions. I tried to get to as many of them as possible. At any rate, I need to get up out of here. I'm going to go get dressed for dinner. Uh, there are some videos that you, if you want to peruse on the channel, make sure you check that out. Follow me on social the links will be in the description box. Cause when I'm not here on YouTube, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. So make sure you follow me there as well. And I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.